Jamie Ford. His second novel, Songs of Willow Frost, will be published on September 10th. Jamie's debut, Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet, has sold 1.3 million copies since it was published in 2009. Or so, your publicist. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just sort of like in <laughs> awe of it myself. It's crazy. Well, it's fair to say that there are a lot of people waiting for this follow-up. So, could you give us a quick description of what this new book is about? The new book, uh, Songs of Willow Frost, it's a story of an orphan in Seattle during the Depression. It starts in the 20s. And it's a, a young boy who's staying at Seattle's Sacred Heart Orphanage. He's never known his father. Last saw his mother when her body was being carried out when he was five years old. Years later, they take the orphans to see a movie on their collective birthday, and he sees an actress on screen that he recognizes as his mother. It's the story of, of him finding out what happened to her and her story of, of why she had to give him up. Okay. Was it inspired by a true story at all? I know your debut had its roots in an actual historical event. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's nothing as, as large as the Japanese internment, but mm -hmm. it, there was a film industry and a film culture in Seattle in the 20s and 30s that was kind of interesting to look at, but also the, the depression in the Seattle area at the time. Um, most of the orphanages had orphans with living parents. They would consign their children. They would yeah. drop them off and leave them for a, a couple of years. Sometimes they never came back. Um, and so this exploring that dynamic. Also, what it meant to be an Asian American woman at the time. Um, when couldn't give birth in a white hospital, things like that. So there's a lot of little tidbits of history that are knit together mm -hmm. to make that story what it is. What sort of research did you do for this book? All Wikipedia. Nothing but Wikipedia. <laughs> that's all I do. Wikipedia. So I hear it's very reliable. <laughs> yeah, that's it's very... I, yeah, I have a very reliable source. I, I quote everything from this book called The Internet. Um, no, um, you know, the, the Museum of History and Industry in Seattle is a big resource, the Wingloop Asian Museum. Um, I have lots of kooky family stories, and then I validate those stories with research. So I, I, I do a lot of research into uh, boring academic out-of-print books that are germane to the story, boring to the typical reader. But for me, it, as a researcher, it's really cool stuff. Well, I know you do weave moments from, since you're a half Chinese, um, from your family's past into your stories. Um, and so far, your work has been inspired by that half of your heritage. Why do you think it captures your imagination in a way that your Caucasian side, or whatever you want to call it, hasn't yet? Or do you ever see yourself writing a story about that side of your family? Uh, that's a really interesting question. Um, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm more intrigued with the, the Chinese side of my family because my dad was an only child. Okay. And so when my dad passed away, I felt cut off from that side of my family, from that heritage. I have lots of cousins and great aunties and uncles. But on my mom's side, she was one of five kids. And so there's, there's a continuity there that's not missing, that's missing on the Chinese side. And so that, that's more interesting culturally for me to kind of splash around in. Well, and speaking of these films from the 20s and 30s, do any of them still exist, or were you able to see any of them before, um, while researching the book? Yeah, a lot of them do. It's, it's interesting. There's a, a film studio depicted in the book. It was the H.C. Mm -hmm. Weaver Studio. It's the third largest film studio in 1932 in the country, but it was in Tacoma, Washington, and it burned down in the 30s, and they only produced three films, and all of those films have since been lost. So those are ones that I would love to see, but uh, a, a print doesn't exist anymore. There are stills as a record of that, um, but those don't. Some of the films by Anime Wong and some of those still exist. The FIFA Baghdad, stuff like that, um, that I've gone back and looked at. Um, so you're really active on social media and you make a lot of appearances, which we've already talked about. Sure. What's your favorite thing about interacting with readers? Or do you... About social media in general? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it depends on the kind of writer you are. There are some writers that they live a very cloistered lifestyle. They don't interact with humanity in any way, except through their words. Um, but the profession is you're, you're very much you're staring at a laptop and you're in storyland and you're living with your imaginary friends. So it's very nice to interact with other people on a frequent basis just to break the isolation, I think. I, I find it stimulating and fun. I met lots of cool people interact with a lot of other authors and people in the industry and 
that's just how the world is socially. Why not apply that professionally? You know, there really isn't uh, uh, a big separation between those worlds for me. Yeah, it's definitely okay, so to close, I know it's kind of early days to ask about this yet since you're just about to release a new book, but are you working on anything else? <laughs> Uh, he laughs nervously. Um, I am. I'm, I'm doing the research and I started writing a new book which tentatively is called The Prize. I'll, I'll rename it. That's just a working title. But it's another story set in Seattle. At the 1909 World's Fair in Seattle, a, they raffled off a child, um, which is a little bizarre to think about. Like the mayor of Castor <laughs> Right. It's like, you know, they raffled off a sheep, a cow, and they raffled off uh, a little boy. And no one knows what happened to this child, so I, I made up this story, and that's um, that's what this new book is about. Wow. Well, it sounds fascinating. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Bye.